guys, it's Kelly from Cards by Christine here with you on a Technique Thursday to share with you the Patchwork Quilt Technique. So, here we go. This um, card features a bunch of different elements that make it look like it's really hand-sewn, um, which I love because it really draws back to the handmade look of all the cards we make, but I just really love how, you know, we've got the stitched on the rectangle here. You've got the stitchery stamp set giving it the hand stitched look. Um, and it's just all reinforced to make this a very cohesive card. So I used the Tidings of Christmas DSP. And I kind of picked through to have different patterns that not only all tied together, but also had some pretty subtle patterns to them so that it wasn't overwhelming because I did bring in four different patterns. So um, you'll see that they all go very well together, but they aren't overwhelming um, the card by having such variety of card, uh, such variety of textures. So I've been dying to use this stitchery set since it came out in the catalog. Um, and I've seen a bunch of different techniques using it that really are cool. So I kind of tied a couple of them together here and I'll show you them as I go. So the first thing you need to do is choose your DSP. And like I said, I do think it is best that the patterns aren't too busy. Um, the trees here are the busiest of the patterns or the, maybe the boldest of the patterns. Um, but I, I didn't want to include too many very busy patterns. So you're going to cut four pieces of DSP out of the stitched rectangles. And this is actually the largest of the stitched rectangles that I used. Um, I love using the rectangle stitch dies. They're like my favorite. And the largest one is a very nice size um, to mat the card. So you're gonna cut four of them and then make sure you've got all of your patterns because the DSP is two-sided so make sure you have all of the patterns that you want to be on the face of your card facing up. Now because it uses a lot of DSP I'm just going to use a basic white stitched rectangle to show you but what you would do is layer all four pieces on top of each other and then um, cut them. I'm using the guillotine I find that to be the easiest when doing something like this um, so I'm going to kind of recreate this pattern here and it doesn't have to be the exact same pattern. You can cut it exactly how you want. They could be all strips if that's how you would like to see it. But essentially you're going to be careful not to catch your fingers and also um, kind of pull your blade towards you if you're using a guillotine style cutter um, so that all four pieces cut at the same spot because you're going to be patching them together to get that quilt look. So we're gonna have one, two, and then three and four. So here would be your four pieces that create your quilt look, okay? Now, I'm gonna move back over to the DSP and I've got here my four pieces, or my four different cuts in the various patterns. So you're gonna want one of each pattern and then you're gonna put it on your mat. Now, because this is the stitched rectangle, it's not an exactly perfect mat size. Your second mat is at four by five and three eighths. That gets the nice even mat around the back. So I cut that out of evening evergreen and then my card base is on soft succulent. So you're going to take your liquid glue and then choose four patterns. So one of each DSP pattern in each of the shapes. So you'll get four cards out of this. So I've got one here, I'm making one here, we'll have this one, and then I think I have another one in one of my piles. Um, and each one will look different because each one will have the paper in a different location. So really cool 
um, way to make a bunch of different cards. You can use the same design for all of them. You'll notice that on each one, I've used um, the color that corresponds to the paper best. So, you know, I, I didn't want to do crumb cake here because it would kind of not really stand off there. And with the crumb cake piece being up there, it fits really well here. So <laughs> you're getting the gist of what's going on here, I think. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way because we don't need that for this card. It's not the easiest to um, kind of piece together here sometimes. So you want to kind of lay it out where they're going to be glued so you know about how close to the edges you can get to have it centered. But know that it's probably going to shift as you're gluing them down. Um, I recognized that as I was doing this technique, well, first of all, every time you do a new technique, it's not going to be perfect. But um, every subsequent time you do it, each card gets a little better. I always notice that on the card that I use as a sample. Typically, it's my first run at it. Um, and then the one that I make on the video is typically my second run at it. And a lot of times it goes a little better the second time, which is funny. It's just kind of part of the learning curve. Um, so don't get frustrated if your card doesn't turn out perfect. Um, and the other thing I was going to say about this technique in particular, it's supposed to look sewn or quilted and if you've ever made a quilt or ever sewn anything in your life before, you'll know that it's never perfect. So I think some of the, the things about this card that don't turn out perfect, it's okay. You know, especially if you're giving it to someone who is a quilter or a sewer, they'll understand that their projects probably never turn out perfect. So it kind of adds to that handmade um, element to it. So you get it all. See, look at that somehow did not get super straight and it could actually be because of some of the cuts. So I'm gonna actually kind of move it a little bit. So <laughs> gonna have a little bit peeking out here and it's not gonna line up perfectly there, but I think that looks a little better than having it so actually kind of hanging off the evening evergreen over there. And that's why when you cut your pieces, the first step, you want it to be as lined up and as held together as possible. And it's not going to be perfect. That's just kind of how it's going to be. So then you're going to take your stitchery stamp set. And where did I put my evening evergreen stamp pad? Oh, right here. Okay, so I actually learned from my first card that, oh, see, there's some of my other pieces. It did not stamp exactly where the sticker showed. So I took mine and trimmed all of the excess red rubber off of it. You'll see here that I cut quite a bit off the edges. So I'm hoping this time it's going to stamp a little more where I want it to than it did the first time. So let's stick it on our block and then ink up our stamp. It's a long stamp. And actually here, I didn't do this exactly how I did it on my sample, so apologies. You probably do want to stamp it on a piece of scrap paper um, before st sticking it down. Now, however, of course, this is evening evergreen on evening evergreen, so it's probably not gonna be that bad. And to be honest, you could take some scraps and butt it up so that it doesn't stamp so onto your mat. But um, I did lay it down on my scrap paper and stamp it before I stuck it down. So whatever works best for you. But essentially, you're going to ink up your stamp and then stamp over where your paper overlaps. See, and still not perfectly where it needs to be. If you're gonna case this design, this is the one I would start with because 
it's mostly covered. So it'll help you with your learning curve. Now, the next one, you want to make sure that you don't, that you start over here with your stitch so that it doesn't um, hang over onto your full piece of fabric. Fabric. <laughs> Okay, and then you're going to have one more stamp here. I have actually whipped out my sewing machine before and um, sewn some pieces of a card. So it was really cool to me that they made the stamp set that emulates sewing because I love that look on a card. Uh, so it's really cool to me. So the next step that I did to really reinforce the hand sewn look was I took my take your pick tool, the pokey end, and actually followed along and poked a hole in each place that the needle would have gone through. So then it really makes it look like it is pierced through and sewn. I'm not a very good sewer. I'm not bad, definitely not the best. Um, I do have a sewing machine and I do sew things, but this is probably what something I sewed actually would look like not quite perfect, not quite straight, <laughs> definitely handmade, but I like it. Okay, so go ahead and pierce each stitch. Now, with your stitched stamp, with these stitch marks from your take or pick tool and with the stitched rectangle, it really looks like you put it on a sewing machine and went to town. So now we're going to adhere it to the card base. Making sure if you're casing this that your trees are Heading north, that is the only directional piece of DSP on this card. So that's the only one we really have to worry about. And then to finish it off, I used the trees from the cabin stamp set. And unfortunately, I didn't um, bring them over to show you. Um, but they had beautiful trees. So I wanted to use that. I die cut the trees in soft succulent and evening evergreen and I just made a stack of a couple of different trees um, to put under the sentiment let's go like this glue them together and then glue them down it's just a fun um, a typical Christmas card. Something different. Actually, I hung that one out a little bit off the edge, which is okay. And then I stamped the sentiment from Heartfelt Wishes. I love the scripty font here. And it just, I mean, I'm telling you, just fit on that um, rectangular stitch. Rectangle, huh, that was quite a thing to say. On the really skinny, long and skinny um, stitched rectangle. So I thought it was a perfect one to put on this um, I don't know, it's a very organic feel when you go ahead and use the stitched elements. Um, so I thought the scripty font really helped kind of reinforce that, that look that I was going for. So I'm gonna lay that 
down here and then put these trees over there. Straighten that up just a little bit. <laughs> and then again, I always like to put ribbon on the card. So I took the linen thread and made a double bow to hang off the side of the sentiment over here. I'm gonna adhere it with a glue dot. And poke it out the side here. And then I took the rhinestones from the Eden's, or the garden gems from the Eden's garden um, suite. I really like these, to me they look kind of half evening evergreen, but also pull in a, a bit of red with the iridescent tone. And I just, even though there's no red on this, it's a very monochromatic card with the greens and just a pop of soft succulent. I like how it um, added just the feel of the Christmassy red with it. So that's why I chose those embellishments. Boom, there is your patchwork quilt card. What do you think? Bring it up in the viewfinder closer for you. Yeah, I just, I really love it. I think it's a great um, different style card for someone who likes to sew or someone who really likes that homemade cozy feel. <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys enjoy this card and I hope you guys have a great Technique Thursday and you can catch Chris later tonight for some live card making.